We all have a desire for truth. As John Lee says, even common animals want the truth. The example he gives is interesting. He says if you take some food and show it to a dog and act as if you're going to give it to him, the dog comes over and then you run off and don't give the, the food to the dog. And you keep this up after several days, it's going to come to the point where the dog doesn't come anymore. And the look it gives you tells you that it's pretty disgusted. But a desire for truth is not something disinterested. In other words, it's not just truth for its own sake. If you really look at our desire for truth, we want a true happiness. We've seen enough of the false and disappointing ha pleasures and happinesses offered by the world. We want something that's really true and dependable. We want to learn, we want to be told the way to find that happiness, the true way to find that happiness. And as we mature, we begin to realize we also want to be true to that way, if we're going to, we're going to be able to live with ourselves. So you've got three kinds of truth right there. There's the truth of the reality of the happiness. There's the truth of the words that tell you how to get there. And then there's the truth of the person, true and following a genuine path, even when it's difficult. And in the practice, it involves all three kinds of those different truths. Nibbana is the true happiness. As for the truth of the person, the Buddha made that one of his prerequisites for wanting to teach somebody. He said, bring me someone who is honest and no deceiver, someone who is observant, and I'll teach that person the Dhamma. Then he would ask that person to take the Dharma as it was taught. And put it to the test. As John Lee also said, if you want to understand the truth of the Dharma, you have to be true. In other words, as a person you have to be true to understand how true the statements are so that you can get to the reality of, of nirvana. So how do you become more true as a person? The Buddha starts with his instructions to Rahula about how important it is to be truthful in reporting what you're doing, what you've done. Then he goes into seeing truly what you're doing and the results of what you're doing. Because you can learn about the Dharma, hear the words, but if you don't understand where they lead, you don't really understand them. This is because Dharma in Pali is also associated often with the word atta, A-T-T-H-A, which means goal or meaning. These, after all, are statements that are meant to lead to behavior that leads to the reality of nirvana. So every statement the Buddha has is meant to lead to a certain type of behavior, which is meant to lead to a certain kind of experience. You're not going to really understand the words until you follow through with those actions that lead to that kind of experience. So you have to test yourself. You have to make yourself the sort of person who is more observant, particularly of your actions. So as he told Ruhula, before you act, look at your intention, and if you see any harm that's going to be done, or you anticipate any harm that's going to be done by that action, then you don't do it. If you don't anticipate any harm, go ahead and do it. But while you're doing it, watch for the results that are coming up while you're doing it. Because in the Buddha's understanding of causality, it's not the case that you wait until your next lifetime for actions to give the results. If you put your finger in a fire, it's going to hurt now. It's not going to hurt two or three lifetimes down the line. So if you see anything harmful coming up, you stop. If you don't see any harm, you can continue. And then when you're done, you look at the long-term results. If it turns out you did cause harm, then you resolve not to repeat that harm. And you go talk it over with someone else on the path, someone who's more experienced, so you can get some ideas about how you might avoid that harm the next time around. If there was no harm, then you can take joy in the fact that your practice is developing, and then you keep it up. 
This, the Buddha said, is how all people who purify their thoughts, words, and deeds go about doing it. So it's in purifying your deeds that you learn about them. Then you look at the ideas that made you want to act in that particular way. And you see which ideas are skillful and which ones are not. It gives you an idea of what's true dharma and what's not. All the way down the line, the Buddha has you test his teachings. Because there are teachings to be tested. They are meant to be beneficial. They're meant to lead to certain kinds of actions. As he said, he wouldn't say things that were false, unbeneficial, or not timely. So the dharma is meant to be true, beneficial, and timely. It's up to you, however, to decide what the right times are and what those benefits are. You do that by testing yourself, developing the qualities that make you more observant. This is one of the reasons why we meditate. We develop our mindfulness and our alertness. So we can be very clear about what we're doing. If you're not clear about what you're doing, how can you know the results of your actions? So you watch the mind. You're alert to see what the mind is doing. You're alert to the breath. And then when you learn anything about the relationship between the mind and the breath, how to get the mind to settle down, how to deal with distractions that pull you away, you remember that. So you can put it into practice again. That's what mindfulness is for. And as you get more precise in observing yourself, you become more and more a true person. Because you see the teachings on what the Buddha said are skillful actions, and what are unskillful actions. When you develop the skillful actions and abandon the unskillful ones, you really do benefit. It may take time. But you've got to think about the time spent, time wasted when you're not practicing. That can go on for a long, long time. There's no end to that time. But this practice does lead to a goal, the reality of the happiness that comes. When you get more and more precise in observing your actions, not only your actions outside, but more specifically the actions of the mind. Because as you get the mind into concentration, you begin to realize that concentration, too, is an action. It, too, is fabricated. It, too, has some stress. Well, the Buddha doesn't call it, call it suffering. He calls it stress. He calls it a disturbance. You look for the disturbances in your concentration, you see where you're causing them in the way you perceive things. Then you refine your perceptions. So you take that principle that he taught to Rahul and you bring it into your mind. And you make yourself more and more true in doing the concentration and in observing and then letting go even of the things that you find attractive. As you begin to realize that they too have their drawbacks. In this way, you, you discover the truth of what John Lee had to say. If you want to understand the Dharma, you've got to be true. In this way, you get all three types of truth. The truth of the person, the truth of the statements that you've tested to see when they're usable and when they're not, how they're to be understood, how they're to be put into practice. When you finally realize the ultimate atta, or goal, which is the goal of the reality of that happiness. Now the reality is not something you do, it's something that's there to be found. And the truth of the statements the Buddha teaches, that's true in itself. They're true in themselves as well. Where you have to do your work is becoming a true person, really putting the teachings into practice, being very careful to observe. 
where you're creating stress, where you're not, where you're creating harm, where you're not, where you're creating disturbance, where you're not. So when you're honest and observant, the basic prerequisites for being a student of the Buddha. You can develop the truth of the person that verifies the truth of the statements by leading to the truth of the reality, the deathless happiness that can be found by putting the Buddhist teachings into practice. This is how we satisfy our desire for truth. There's no other truth that satisfies that desire. So look to yourself. How true are you? The more true you are, the more you'll be able to understand the truths the Buddha was talking about and the reality he was talking about. And your desire for truth will be satisfied.